All right. So yesterday on the news video, I went into a bit of a discussion regarding the Light Lens Lab update. There's a lot more about this blog post I didn't even talk about. So I'm going to take time to do that today, get into some more of the finer points, and then also potentially discuss some further implications about what this news means for the future of film photography. So we'll break into it with the title itself. Uh, the back half of it, 2025 goals, what are they hoping to release in the year 2025? I touched on this lightly with their hope to release a T-grain structured film with a 125 speed black and white emulsion in 35 millimeter 120 and large format. That's one of their plans for 2025. They also hope to release a 400 speed, more traditional black and white film and I believe 35 millimeter and 120 as well. They don't clarify on that, but they're hoping to produce this film in 2025 as part of our initial, and then it cuts off. So I'm thinking there might be more to that paragraph that didn't get included, but given what they are hoping to do with the 125, the presumption would be they're probably aiming to do something similar with their 400 speed film. Think of something like HP5 in that regard, kind of a standard, black and white 400 speed film. The other big item that they want to release in 2025 is their instant peel apart film. Now this was one of the main things that people got really interested in this project because there's not a whole lot of peel apart film on the market. There's any old Fuji FP stuff you can find and then one instant, which I think they're still in business, but it's pretty expensive. There's no telling how much this is gonna cost, but just for the fact that there's going to be other options on the market is exciting enough for people to get behind. But they're gonna have an update on the packaging and the test shot in the next blog post for that. So that's something that if you're really into the peel apart film, I recommend that you keep your ears peeled for that because it could be coming up sooner rather than later. So those are the three products they're hoping to release black and white film and black and white peel apart film. Before we get into their future projects, uh, I do wanna to touch on something else in terms of the products themselves, because if you look at the film space right now, the things on offer, a lot of the things on market are black and white films and Kodak color film, Kodak color film recanned, or Filmotech film, Filmotech film recanned, Harman Experimental Film, and that's about it. A decent amount of variety, but there's not as much as there once was. With a situation like the Lucky Color Film, the reason people are excited about that is because it is a new color film, but it's also coming in at presumably a much lower cost than the film that is out there currently. So with something like this, they're only producing black and white film, and if it was just the black and white film, I would be a lot less optimistic about their pursuits of future projects because the black and white film market's pretty saturated. There's a lot of new emulsions out there, not that they're good or better, worse than each other, it's just that the market's pretty flush with options. And unless it's coming in at like $2 a roll or $5 a roll, point kind of remains of, well, I could get Kentmere, I could get Ilford, I could get Kodak, I could, get any of these films that have name recognition that I've shot with before, and they're probably gonna cost about the same, if not less, than newer films. I mean, you look at something like Ferrani, which is a film I really love, but Ferrani comes in at a pretty premium price, so it's really hard to justify getting a premium priced, very slow black and white film when I can get HP5, probably two rolls of that for one roll of Ferrani, or I could get like two or three rolls of Kentmere for one roll of Ferrania. A lot of people aren't really gonna notice the difference too much. Some people will, but for the most part, if you're just getting into photography, you're not gonna care one way or another. You're just gonna try to be shooting whatever you can get your hands on. So I think the fact that they're hoping to also release a peel apart film means that they are introducing something to the market that is diversifying their brand as a whole. And I think their pursuits of these more niche products, these more niche interests, ultimately will benefit them in the long run from just being another company that's like, oh, hey, here's another black and white film that we're making. Here's 
some generic color film that we're making. They're, they're trying to do other things, which is pretty impressive and something I'm excited to see. From that point, they're also looking into motion picture film, developing that. And this was something I believe they covered in a previous blog post, but that would be very fascinating to see. I would love to see new motion picture film out there. For now, it's pretty much Kodak and Orwo, I think are the only two companies that actually produce motion picture film. But the problem with it is, is the processing and scanning of it is still pretty expensive. So it kind of comes back to, I wanna make sure that whatever product I purchase is consistent and can consistently deliver quality material. So do you wanna take a gamble with a new product or do you wanna just sit with Kodak or whoa, things you can kind of count on. And even then, Kodak pretty much is the, the answer for a lot of people. But optimistically, if they're able to produce a lower priced competitor to the motion picture market, and it is consistent and easy to use, that would be a new wrinkle to the game. And that might cause the sleeping giant that is Kodak to kind of start competing again and start trying to push the envelope of what they can produce as opposed to what they're doing now which is nothing that, that's a very like american centric perspective that's how it's going to affect this particular market and that just happens to be because that's where i live i'm kind of overlooking uh, a more even important thing which is the chinese market light lens lab lucky these are chinese companies i don't really have a great thumb on the pulse as to what the ecosystem in China is like for film photography. I've heard from a few people that live in China that really love shooting film. So I'm presuming that it's roughly the same as it is here where there's a lot of like really interested people, youths and stuff that are trying to get back into it. So being able to have like a homegrown production facility manufacturer of film would make it a lot more affordable on that end in that whole southeast asian region maybe even potentially for australia shout out the australians that watch love you guys europe as well and as we take another step back and look at just general global economics and politics it's no secret that things aren't looking too hot for american chinese relations so the ability for China to procure film from America might potentially be stunted to some degree. It might have tariffs on it or something like that. So then being able to have production facilities in-house per se would make it much more affordable and would make the general growth of film, film photography, film videography in the 21st century, that would kind of spur that on quite well. So. That's something that I often overlook when I talk about these things because I'm just thinking about from my perspective, which is living in America, what we have, the market that I'm aware of and all that stuff. So there are potential benefits for non-American countries. There's a lot of potential benefits on that front. Is it enough to sustain the growth that Light Lens Lab is hoping to achieve by virtue of doing all these projects? who's to say. But the other thing that I want to point out very briefly, and it's why I have this lovely book right here. Another thing that they talk about is potentially developing and delivering by 2026. I believe that they're operating on the lunar calendar. So I think that's more like eight months away technically, but still not very far off. They're hoping to develop and produce color reversal films that consist of dye incorporating development process commonly known as K14 for 35 millimeter and 120 formats. K14 is Kodachrome, ostensibly. It's not really entirely the truth, but it's for the most part the truth. K14 is the development process that Kodachrome utilized. It is an intensive process of like 17 different steps of getting the film looking the way that it looks. Some of the best color pictures in the world were taken with Kodachrome. Some of the most famous family photos that you might have from like a vacation if you were a little bit older and your uncle had a camera and a lot of money were probably taken on Kodachrome. It's an infamous film. There's a John Lennon, Beatles, John. So there's a song about Kodachrome. I don't remember who sang it, but my mom always reminds me of it. There's a movie about Kodachrome. It's not a good movie, but um, 
what's his face is in Ed Harris, I think is in it. The last roll of Kodachrome was developed in 2011. So for 14, 15 years later, there to be potentially a resurgence of Kodachrome would be exciting. I mean, some of the examples here of the film, it's so rich and vibrant. This is like a very poor reproduction of these images. Uh, and this book is as old as the hills, but even the chance of getting some of this back would be phenomenal. And this goes to my next point of Light Lens Lab as a whole. I am skeptical to some degree because they are launching a lot of products, right? We've not yet to see any of these come to fruition yet, but they're like, oh, we wanna do this, we wanna do this, we wanna do this, we wanna do this. They came out the gate firing on all cylinders. These are all the projects that we have going. This is what we hope to accomplish. On one hand, that leads me to be like, I don't know how much stock I can put in any of this because I'm aware of the Ferrani. <laughs> I'm aware of the Ferrani Kickstarter, okay? I'm aware of all of these like really hyped up, trumped up ideas of like what we can do to reinvent the film photography industry. Um, a lot of people come in with huge expectations and ultimately fall short of delivery because it's an expensive thing. The knowledge is pretty much gone for a lot of this. The, all of the stuff that go, like, it's just, it's such a complex thing to even consider. But, so you look at that and you're like, okay, they might get one or two of these things. They might develop a black and white film, but that's it, right? That. The other hand, though, is looking at this. And with each blog post, there are significant developments that they're making. There are major strides in positive directions. There, there seems to only be progress being made. And with each progress update, there's also, oh, and also we might try to do this too, which put on my psychoanalyst hat here really quickly, that would lead me to think that there is a lot of support within the team, right? Because I've worked in places before where it's like, I want to do X, Y, Z. I want to sort this, organize this, create a database, whatever. And I've worked in places where I come in with those ideas and start working on it. And people are like, yeah, keep going. And it, it, it inspires you. You want to do more, right? It, it builds this confidence within you of like, I can do anything. Like with the right support, people can accomplish quite a lot. I've also worked in places where I want to do X, Y, Z. And it's like fighting uphill, you know, whether my idea is good or bad or whether it's someone else's idea that's good or bad, there's just no support, there's no communication, so just nothing ends up getting done and it feels like this defeating thing. And you don't go into the meetings with like, oh, we're, we're getting it done. You go in the meetings like, whatever, like, this is just a job or whatever, I don't care. This reads to me as like a lot of passionate people that are passionately pursuing these projects. And I think that they recognize that there is a need for some diversity in these projects, but I also think that there is an element of like, what can we do? What can we do? And this goes back to the point I was making earlier where if they're just releasing a black and white film, that's really cool, that's commendable, but that's not like a great way to stay in business for a very long time. If they're able to reproduce Kodachrome, they're able to produce peel apart film, if they're able to produce motion picture film, if they're able to produce, you know, color negative film, if they're able to produce all these items, all these different things, they're consistent, they're affordable. I don't see how they can't be successful. There is going to be somebody, even if like the price is exorbitant, there's somebody out there that would want to shoot with some more K14 film. There's someone out there that would be interested in getting K14 chemistry. I would be just because I have so many rolls of Kodachrome that I was like, I'll just hold on to these because like there's no sense trying to sell it to someone. There's no sense in trying to shoot with it because you can't develop it. But now I can. And I mean, it's very old and expired, but still it's like 
that's something. There's so much interest in this project. And I think like going through the images that they're able to produce, I was like scrubbing back through their back catalog of updates to find the, the cat picture with the halation. And I, cause I wanted to use that in like in contrast with their current images just to see the difference, right? And I was like shocked. I thought that that news came out in like November or something like that, or like October. Like I thought this was like kind of older news, but it was like February, like it was a few months ago. <laughs> And just to see the strides that they made from that point. Obviously, they've been working on it probably well before the announcement in February. But still, like, the strides they've made in, what, four months is pretty remarkable. And they're also, like, running a whole lens development uh, department. And they're making lenses and stuff. So I think it's fair to remain cautiously optimistic of these projects and of like future projects and stuff like that, even if it does crash and burn, which I hope it doesn't, especially because I'm giving them my namesake to put on the film, which they're totally going to do. <laughs> um, even if it does like crash and burn, whatever, it's still like an interesting thing to think about. Like, what can you do in 2025, 2026? Like what products can be resuscitated, can be brought back to market. And I'm most curious to see at what point, if these films come out, if these developments are made, at what point does that light a fire under Kodak, under Ilford, Harman, Orwo, any of these companies, at what point does that inspire them to pursue other projects, to pursue other, truthfully, I don't know, I'm kind of still in the belief that like Kodak doesn't need to do anything differently. They have won for the most part. When you think about shooting film, 90% of people probably think about Kodak. And just like not film photographers, just like 90% of the public, their awareness of film is kind of centered on Kodak. But again, I'm thinking of just the American market, just worldwide wise. If they're able to produce a fraction of these and just sell it in Japan, China, Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand, Oceanic region there, and Europe, good, good to go. They don't, you know, easy peasy. But easier said than done, without a doubt. I'm curious to see where it ends up. I was just very siced to read about the K14 process, potentially making a comeback. If it does, that would be groundbreaking, I think. That would be cause for celebration for a lot of people, for myself included. That'd be really cool to see that come back. Um, and yeah, I don't know, peel apart film, people are like really interested in that. So seeing that come back would be pretty cool, I think, for a lot of people, seeing other producers of that as well. And the other thing, too, if we're talking about posterity, is without people kind of trying to resuscitate it gradually over the decades here, that will just be lost, you know? Peel Apart Film's not been around for a while, but, you know, in 40, 50 years, if nobody's making it, nobody will be around that would know how to make it. So it will be lost. And it could be recreated through various different means, whatever. But if you let the fire go out, you might be able to start something from the embers. But for the most part, the fire is out, if that makes sense. That's pretty much it, I think, for now. I'm just excited to see where things go. I thought it was worth kind of digging into a little bit more. I think that there's a lot of like implications as mentioned and uh, just wanted to give it another look-see and spend a little more time talking about this specifically. Uh, a lot of other things like this on the horizon, so I'm excited to see. There's also like that other Chinese company that's developing Peel Apart film that I need to touch base back on. But anyway, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it. As always, uh, like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you on the next one.